Jewish Sex in the First Century by David Speak. We will review today the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Essenes, and the Sicarii. The first two are very important, the second two not so much. We will talk about who they are, what they believed, their history, and their relationship to Jesus. Now the Pharisees, which means to separate, are the fathers of modern day Judaism. Back in their time, they were blue collar kind of guys, middle class people who followed a strict adherence to the law. And in a sense, they were heroes of the day as they were well supported by the people. They believed in the oral law that God gave to Moses, which became the Talmud, and that the law was open to interpretation. They believed that you did not necessarily have to be a priest to understand the law, and that you, as a middle class person, could earn good standing by studying the law. They believed in an afterlife. They believed that God punished the wicked and rewarded the righteous in the world to come. They also believed in the Messiah that would usher in world peace. It is believed that the nephew of Judas Maccabeus named John Hyrcanus, who established a new priestly monarchy following the defeat of the Greeks, is the founder of the Pharisees. They attempted to separate themselves and restore the law as is what intended to be after this period of time. Now, we all know that Jesus and the Pharisees did not really get along. If, you're, if someone calls you a Pharisee today, it's usually an insult. He believed the Pharisees, though, even though they followed the law strictly and had others do the same, did not truly love God in their hearts and were more interested in the rules and bragging about the rules as opposed to being good stewards of the Lord. Now the Sadducees. This may be who we think of when we think of the Sadducees, but the Sadducees were rich, noble classes of the first century Judea. They had high priesthood and controlled the temple. They collected taxes. They were not well liked as they had a reputation for corruption. They believed in the Torah as being divinely inspired and should have no interpretation and be taken literally. There is no afterlife. There is no resurrection once you are dead. There are no spirits, angels, or demons. Once you are dead, that's it. Now they came into power after the Maccabean Revolt and they inherited the wealthy estates left by the Greeks. They were considered the educated elites, landowners, and learned how to profit from Roman occupation. Now, Jesus had little debate with the Sadducees. There was a question about the afterlife of Matthew, but as they were looking to keep the status quo, any question would have asked Jesus to see if he was a threat to their authority. Now, the Essenes are the lesser-known people of that time. According to Josephus, they were a large Judaic monastic community numbered in thousands throughout Israel. Often, though, when I think of the Essenes, this is who I think of. Modern day, maybe monks or Buddhists or whoever, except these were devoted to God. Often they did not believe in owning any property. They were very different from the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They didn't believe, that, they believed that you should share the wealth. They did not believe in sacrificing animals, and they believed that was something that was misinterpreted and that was skewed in the original law. They did not believe in spirit they did not believe in marriage, but they did believe in spiritual survival after death. Like the Pharisees, they had their own interpretations of the rules, but were not similar in content to the Pharisees. Now they came to be, it is believed, from a Zadokite priest who was just sick and rejected the Jerusalem leadership. They gained notoriety when the Dead Sea Scrolls were found and everyone started getting curious as to who they were. Some people, however, claimed they never existed. Their relationship to Jesus is unknown. 
But someone did make up a story about the teachings of Jesus coming from the Essenes, and he lived in the monastic community before starting his ministry. If this is the case, that might explain his disappearance before we know him at 30 years old. And last but certainly least, the Sicarii are the people who... What happens when you invade a country and a select group of people don't like it and do something to fight back? This has happened throughout history. Today we call them terrorists, ninjas, or assassins. But in the time of Christ, they were called the Sicarii and were experts at this craft long before our time. It seems people do not change. They are called the Sicarii because it was the name of a small dagger that was used to attack prominent political leaders or people they just didn't want in power. They would conceal the daggers, stab their target, then slip back into the crowd. Now, they kind of came into power when the Jews learned that during the Maccabean Revolt that guerrilla warfare could work and that whoever was occupying their country may find it too costly to stick around. That hasn't changed much either. They weren't all sunshine and roses, though. According to Josephus, they raided nearby villages and murdered nearly 700 women and children after the time of Christ. They were, however, essential in winning control of Jerusalem back from, Ro from the Romans in 66 AD. But they executed anyone who tried to fight them from attaining, from keeping their power. The Sicarii have no relationship to Jesus. Outside of Judas of Iscariot potentially being an ex sicarii but like most historical facts, this is also disputed. Not most, some. And this is the end of my presentation. We talked about the Pharisees, the Sudicis, the Essenes, and the Sicarii, their impact on the period of that time and what they believed and how they affected Jesus. Thank you very much.